I want to thank everyone for joining us today, and we are pleased to be able to show you the new Navigate 2 Advantage Access for the textbook Fundamentals of the Physical Therapy Examination, Patient Interview and Tests and Measures. The textbook has been out for a little while, but we just recently launched the Navigate 2 portion, and I'll tell you a little bit about Navigate 2, and then we'll get into an actual live demonstration. Uh, Navigate 2 is now available with the textbook, as I mentioned, and it's actually available at the same price. So for the same price as the textbook, students are getting access to Navigate 2. Uh, we have the ordering ISBN here for the package. And in the Navigate 2 Advantage Access, this will include a complete ebook. So students will not, they will not only have the print textbook, with the access code for Navigate 2 Advantage, they will have access to a complete ebook. The ebook has interactive tools as well as over, uh, I believe it's 71 videos uh, showing tutorials for the different tests and measures and examination procedures, as well as a virtual study center with practice activities, uh, a homework center with quizzes, and a dashboard that reports actionable data including quiz grades and student time uh, spent in different sections of the ebook and study center. Navigate 2 Advantage Access is not only for students, we also have uh, great teaching tools for instructors, uh, which include a syllabus, learning objectives, uh, lecture PowerPoint slides, an image bank, a test bank, and again, the system will automatically grade the quantitative assessments within the Navigate 2 system and provide reports. And without further ado, we'd like to show you the student portion and I'd like to introduce Robert Housen, our Navigate Implementation Specialist. Good afternoon, my name is Rob Housen. I'm a Solutions Analyst slash Navigate Implementation Specialist here at Jones & Bartlett. And um, what we're going to do this afternoon is walk through the advantage access of the Navigate 2 platform for the physical therapy examination text. Um, please, if you do have any questions, feel free to submit them, and then at the end of the session, we'll address those questions to the best of our abilities. Uh, I'd like to just take a couple seconds and introduce, or kind of hash through my role here at Jones & Bartlett. What the solutions team is responsible for is serving as um, a conduit to you as instructors to help you with real world scenarios and best case practices when setting up your courses. We also, as an organization, offer a customer technical support group that's based out of Kansas City, and they're pretty much in place for your students. So should your students have issues when accessing the course or accessing assessments or uh, pieces of the curriculum, we, we do uh, suggest that they start with that group. If their problem persists and you have uh, students still coming to you as an instructor, I encourage you to please reach out to myself or the members of our team. Um, that's somewhat of a selfish request. We kind of really benefit from hearing how users and instructors like yourself are using the tool in the trenches, because then we get a better understanding of how instructors are actually using the tool on a day-to-day -day basis. We're able to take that information and extrapolate it out and share it with other instructors across the country who are also using the platform. So what I'm going to do now, and your screen may flicker for a second, I'm going to jump into the actual Navigate 2 course, and you'll see the, uh, the platform come up on your screen. Your screen should now display in the upper left-hand corner, Jones & Bartlett Learning Navigate 2. Uh, this is what we would refer to as our front page of our Navigate 2 platform. When we went through the process of identifying how we wanted to improve our learning management system, um, we spoke with instructors and educators as well as students and, and uh, solicited their feedback. From their feedback, we made the decision to create this platform or this package and use the functionality that you'll see in a couple of minutes, but anyone who's familiar with a Moodle-based system will note some similarities. In addition, though, we wanted to make sure that we tried to take the Moodle component out of Moodle. So to customize things a little bit and make it a little more proprietary for Jones and Bartlett, because we felt that that was the best way to embrace the 21st century learner, 
and that's what we've chosen to do. So to start, you'll notice that at, we're, we're sitting on what's referred to as the lessons pathway. In the lessons pathway, the curriculum is segregated or compartmentalized based on chapters or sections, um, more of a sequential order to, to go along in conjunction with the actual text. So if I expand any of these individual placards that you see for each chapter, all of the associated curriculum is displayed. So the learning objectives, the e-books are, are outlined by chapter, flashcards, practice activities, slides, lecture outlines, and then key image review. Those pieces are all in place, again, in, follow, in the order of the actual chapters of the text. We've also utilized a learning tools pathway. And now the learning tools pathway is meant to act, uh, I like to use the analogy of the lessons pathway is more of the actual classroom, while the learning tools pathway is more of a study hall. So when the student gets into the study hall to the learning tools pathway, they're going to focus their time and energy into the resources that best suit their learning style. So you'll note that under the ebook placard, all of the individual ebook chapters for the text are displayed. If the students wanted to focus on using the ebook instead of having to drill down through each and every chapter, all of the ebook chapters are displayed in one easy to, easy to find and easy to access location. In the study center placard, the students gain access to the flashcards learning objectives, lecture outlines, and practice activities. Again, they're grouped by learning type. So all of the chapter practice activities are consolidated in one quick and easy to access area. The reason for this is that we've done a number of studies and there have been uh, multiple studies done over the past decade that show that the attention span of the average American adult 15 years ago was somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 10 minutes. Um, we're finding now that in, uh, that in the current time, the average American adult attention span has dropped to somewhere between eight and five minutes, which means that the students, um, be they new students, uh, typically the younger or, or uh, next generation of st students, when they step into the classroom, we're hopeful that their attention span will maybe come close to three to four minutes. So what we've chosen to do is to consolidate the different pieces of the curriculum and all of the associated assets with the text by learning type. So the hope here is that if you have students that are auditory learners, they have access to uh, any of the pieces that are specific for them. Visual learners have access to these actual videos and the slides. And kinesthetic learners, in some instances of our courses, we have material available specifically for them as well. But uh, all of these components, again, are in place in the learning tools pathway for the students to be able to access them uh, based on learning type. The instructor view of the tool also affords you the opportunity to get into what we refer to as the teaching tools. Now the teaching tools pathway gives you this access to the test bank where you can manage items, which is basically where you would either add or select questions from the existing test bank to add to assessments, and then manage assessments where you would actually delve in and have the ability to create assessments of your own or utilize prepackaged assessments and edit or uh, alter them as you would see fit. The intent is that the tool exists as a turnkey solution, which affords you as an educator the opportunity to present material basically right out of the box, but we also know that it is uh, scalable and flexible enough to allow you and afford you the opportunity to add material as you see fit, where you see fit, to structure your course to your liking, to how it works best for you. Now, uh, I'm going to just walk through a couple of the, the key components of the Navigate 2 tool and, and at a pretty, pretty high level, again, at around 35,000 feet. We are available, the solutions team is available for extended additional webinars if you have the need to get at a more granular level or if you have questions that don't feel that they were addressed by today's webinar. Uh, please feel free to contact Jones and Bartlett and we can put you in touch with the right people to do that. But uh, we are certainly available to do that and we actually, again, we encourage you to do so because it helps us and, and hopefully helps you. So it's a somewhat symbiotic relationship. So first and foremost, when you're logged into the tool as an instructor, 
You'll see in the uh, upper right hand corner this nice red button that says turn editing on. And as an instructor, once you do that, it does just what you imagine it would do. It engages the editing features of the tool. You'll see that the tool shifts a little bit and we have some additional functionality, these, these little buttons that appear under each placard. You'll also notice that as soon as we turn editing on within the lesson tools pathway, we have access now to the instructor's toolbox. This instructor's toolbox is, again, specific to the, the educator. It's not available to students. But within the instructor's toolbox, you're able to store tools or store pieces of uh, your course that you would like to have access to in an easy to reach area. Uh, and, and there are a number of items that are preloaded in there. We do ask you to, to not manipulate any of those items or you could have problems with prepackaged components that are already in the gradebook. Uh, and in the course. So once the editing tools are engaged, you have the ability, and if there's anybody in the room or on the call, excuse me, who has utilized Navigate One, you'll see uh, a number of areas where we've taken feedback from instructors and students and changed some things around to make it a little more user friendly. Again, trying to take the Moodle out of Moodle. So we can move chapters as we see fit just by using the move functionality and everything just realigns as we see. We can then pull things back in. And again, it's all very straightforward and, and very point and click savvy. Um, we also have the ability to highlight a topic as being the current topic of the week or a session for you as an instructor. Uh, instructors also have the ability to hide individual topics. Now, the instructor again can hide an entire placard item or uh, they can, if you expand the placard to show the underlying pieces, you can hide individual items. For instance, if you wanted to hide the learning objectives for Chapter 2 with one click, you can then hide those pieces. Now, if you're anywhere near uh, as anal retentive as I am, you'll want to have some ability to be able to really confirm that that did what you wanted it to do. And one of the things that Navigate includes that's a really neat feature is the switch role to components on the left-hand navigation pane. And with one click, you as an instructor are able to jump in to your course as a student. You'll note that the teaching tools pathway has disappeared, as has the turn editing on option, as well as the instructor's toolbox. You're viewing the course as a student would. You'll note, though, that within Chapter 2, that first function, that first learning objective piece is not visible to the student because you've hidden it as an instructor. So this is a great tool for instructors as they make changes, and with one click, they're able to jump back to their normal role. They're able to validate where the changes are that they've added or taken, uh, taken liberties with and made sure that those pieces are displaying when and how they would like. So with another click to turn editing back on, we're then able to simply unhide that learning objective. And in the student view again now, the student would again be able to see that learning objective piece. Now, each of these placards, in this instance, represents an actual chapter of the text. If you as an instructor would like to add additional placards for your own uh, use, if there's perhaps instances of information that you would like to set up, it's simply done at the bottom of the screen here with the uh, little plus indicator there that increases the number of sections. And with one click, you could add an additional tile or placard to your course. And once that placard comes up, we'll scroll down, you'll see that it's just labeled simply as Topic 11. We can expand the actual topic or section. And there's nothing in it, of course, we just added it. But we can now edit, edit its underlying pieces. And we're going to uncheck the default section name, and we'll change this to So if you just wanted to create something that, again, might exist as a basic course repository for your students, with just one simple click, you're able to do that. You are able to put pieces out there, again, for your students, for them to have access to on an ongoing basis as they see fit. Now, uh, one of the really uh, interesting features of Navigate is the ability of you as an instructor to add either activities or resources to an individual placard or an individual section of the course. 
For instance, within Chapter 2, <clears throat> as we scroll down, we'll see that, again, learning objectives, ebook, flashcards are all loaded by default. However, as, a, as an instructor, if you wanted to add, for instance, an actual um, an activity, you would do so by clicking on the Add an Activity or Resource button. Uh, the distinction is that an activity is something that's assignable and gradable, which will mean that it will show up in the gradebook for your students. And a resource is something that you would want to share with your class. It might be um, an actual link to, pardon me, it might be an actual link to a website external of the tool or uh, even a YouTube video. Now, we do know from our research and our interaction with instructors that many of you do like to take advantage of digital technology and share things like YouTube videos in your class. So what we've chosen to do is allow you to do so with some pretty simple, straightforward functionality. So you would click on the Page button and click Add. And this will bring you in to the section of the tool where we would actually define the video which we're going to add. And in this instance, we're going to label it Video and um, we'll use Torn Labrum. And yeah, it does require a descriptor. So we need to, any elements that here uh, include a red asterisk are descriptors and need to be included. Now, uh, the name and description are here. We would click on display description on a course page to have that description show or not show. Now, once we get to the content section of this page, the one thing we would do, and this is, uh, again, a pretty slick little piece of technology, we would click on an insert Moodle media, which allows us to then click on find or upload a sound. Now, by default, looking at YouTube videos, we can simply search for the term Torn Labrum. And then when we click the search tool, it'll bring up any YouTube videos that include the term Torn and Labrum. So, we have a video here. It's Labral Tears Part 2. We select this file. And then by simply clicking Insert, and then scrolling down, we can save and return to our course. And then within our Chapter 2 placard, we'll see the Torn Labrum video, which we've now added to this course. And with one click, the video is available for your students to, uh, to watch at their own pace and at their own time. So instead of you, again, using valuable brick and mortar classroom time uh, to show assessments of this type, you can assign these as well to be done after hours. Now, in order to assign this, again, it was added as a resource, so it won't show up in the student's gradebook, but one could simply add an assignment directly below the video, and then that assignment could be to simply uh, write up a paragraph of what you thought of the video and how it might or might not uh, com uh, line up with what you've read in the text or what the students took from the video, just as a matter of you validating that they actually did watch the video. And then it would exist as both an assignment and a resource for your students. Now, uh, users of uh, Navigate One would also often tell us that there was some, uh, some clumsy um, functionality with regard to adding pieces to the actual course. So if you had, for instance, documents local to your, uh, to your environment that you would like to add to your Navigate course, there was a multiple step process that you would went through to load them up onto our hosted environment and then make them available to your students in your course. What we've done with Navigate 2 is try to simplify that. Now, you'll also notice that what I'm about to do is I minimize or change the size of my screen Navigate 2 will use what we refer to as its responsive design. And anyone who uses a uh, mobile phone or a smartphone or a uh, tablet in this day and age, you'll somewhat understand what that is. If you ever use your, that technology to access a website that doesn't incorporate mobile design, or pardon me, responsive design, it becomes very difficult for you to see all of the different components of that website. It's not designed to accommodate the tool. But as I minimize this page, you'll notice that what was tabs for learning tools and teaching tools have now shifted to be banners. And as I shrink the page, it continues to make them visible. So they are available and still uh, accessible. Just 
stop doing that to me. There we go. Uh, available and accessible to you as, a, as an instructor as well as to your students. Now, having done that, we will then really quickly, and I just happen to grab something right here off of my desktop. And if I'm in, again, the Learning Tools pathway or the Lessons pathway, I scroll down here below the instructor's toolbox. I pick an individual chapter. In this instance, I'm going to expand chapter one, and I'm just going to grab something from my desktop to pull into the course. And it's just a drag and drop functionality, just like that, and everything that is dragged and dropped into the course will appear at the bottom. So this is just a small Charlie Brown comic that I happen to have on sitting on my desktop on my machine. But just like that, you're able to add pieces to your course with the with a simple drag and drop. Now again, the responsive design allows us with one click as we expand things out, and then again click on our lessons pathway, bringing us back into the tool from our front page. And again, that piece has been added. You could do the same with any PDFs, um, Word documents, PowerPoints that you may have and may want to share with your class. They can be dragged and dropped into the course just with a simple drag and drop technology. Now, when you want to add, for instance, an assessment to your course, and we're using the term assessment. Uh, previously in Navigate 1, we used the term quiz to denote any online testing environment. We're now uh, trying to use the term assessment because by default, we've loaded quizzes to most advantage access level courses, and we've also provided you with instructors with preloaded midterm and final examinations. So for instance, if in chapter one, we wanted to add an individual quiz, what we would do is click on the add an activity option and then scroll down, click on the quiz identifier and then add. This would afford us the opportunity to provide a name for the assessment and we will just refer to this one as quiz chapter one. There is no description required. We could include one if we wanted. Um, and then the available assessment titles that we have stored in our repository are displayed. Since this is a chapter one quiz, I'm going to keep things simple and just select chapter one. Now, this is again using a prepackaged quiz that we've made available to you as an educator. If you wanted to create your own assessment or add your own questions uh, to the existing test bank, that is something that can be accomplished. Um, it's something that's a little more granular, and I, I think that if there are any users on the phone that are interested, I would encourage you to contact us and we'll look at setting up a webinar where we can walk you through that. But uh, I think our time will be best spent where that would be a more interactive dynamic and we can answer questions on the fly. Now, uh, I've selected the Chapter 1 quiz, and the first component here that I'd like to talk about is the restrict access. This is the area where you as an instructor set the window of availability for this assessment. So in short, you're defining when the assessment will be available for your students. And by selecting, enabling both the from and until options, we're able to then choose from the calendar when this assessment will be scheduled. So we're going to schedule this for the 24th of October. And we're going to set the time as a start time of noon, and we're going to finish things up at 1400 hours or 2 p.m. So what this allows you to do as an instructor is, again, set that window of availability for your students. In short, it's kind of like being able to lock and unlock the door of your classroom. Um, since it's a digital environment, obviously, the students would be able to access this assessment from any place that they were able to access the tool, but you can, you can control the time frame with which they're able to access the component or the assessment. Um, once you've added that piece, that individual quiz will appear under Chapter 1. And again, as we scroll down, you'll see that it's at the very bottom. And we can very easily move it to another position here in the course, again, using that simple move functionality. The icon-based navigation that you see at the individual function or item level is uh, pretty straightforward. This little pencil is the edit title, which allows you to change the name, basically, or label for uh, an individual piece. Um, the right arrow is both the right and left. It allows you to indent or move items along the horizontal. Uh, the move 
icon allows you to move items up and down or along the vertical. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You can also adjust, uh, update an individual item, and again, that's a little bit more of a granular level. We do have the ability and afford you the opportunity to delete items. The one caveat that we would add to that is that we recommend that you tread lightly, and the reason is is that if you do delete something from the course, it's not something that you can retrieve personally, meaning there's no undo or no trash bin for you to grab that material and re reinsert it. It's not an insurmountable thing. We would just ask uh, that you tread lightly and be careful. You would just contact us and we would reload that material to your course. If you were by, uh, by chance to delete something of your own which you've added to the course, we would not be able to help you. Um, logic dictates that you're a prudent individual and you have a copy of it somewhere uh, locally, but again, we just ask that you do uh, keep that in mind and be cognizant of when you're using that delete functionality. Uh, most of our instructors tend to live in this hide area to prevent themselves from facing that circumstance, so you can hide any particular piece uh, as you see fit. Now, um, we've gone through the process of adding both an activity and a resource, and I've shown you some of the drag and drop functionality, as well as the, the responsive design and the mobile ready pieces of Navigate 2. One thing I would like to add that is a very interesting feature and a very, very um, exciting piece of functionality that we're proud of is since our tool is mobile ready and does utilize a responsive design, your students would be able to access it from most readily available technologies, tablets and phones, um, such as the iPad or uh, iPhone or Galaxy or Android-based phones. Now, to access the tool from any of those, you would need uh, what is referred to as the Navigate e-Reader. And it's a free application that can be accessed or, or retrieved from either the Google Play Store or iTunes, the Apple iTunes Store. And once your students have uh, acquired that free e-Reader, they would be able to access the components of the course, uh, specifically the e-book, um, for the e-reader with those mobile-ready devices. Now, one of the really exciting pieces of that is that should you have students who are utilizing a tablet to take their courses, they would be able to download certain chunks or particular chunks of the e-book and then store that on their tablet. And even when they're not within Wi-Fi or internet connectivity, uh, say they're going fishing for the weekend or they're going to go leaf peeping, they'll have that iPad and be able to, to utilize those assets on the iPad, including taking things like ebook quizzes and knowledge checks. That information will be stored, and then the next time the student is brought within Wi-Fi or internet access range, the application will automatically upload and sync that information up with our server, so the grades would be recorded in your gradebook. So kind of a neat little thing that allows students the ability to, to utilize the functionality and access the digital version of the book, which is our e-book, um, without actually having to carry around an actual textbook. Now, that being said, I, I want to kind of jump into the ebook and show you some of the functionality that is available within the tool. Now, I'm going to use Chapter 2. Um, any of the chapters have basically the same functionality. The Physical Therapy Examination Text uh, ebook contains a lot of bells and whistles that uh, we're really proud of. Um, but first and foremost, you'll recognize that it's, it is just what you'd imagine. It's a digital version of the textbook. You uh, and your students have the ability with uh, simple clicks to page through. And this page turning functionality is available with both the arrow. You can also use the actual um, mouse, excuse me, the cursor and mouse pad to do so. If you are interested, you can very simply turn off the page turning functionality, and that allows you to simply arrow through and move through the um, move through the ebook a little more uh, rapidly, but some people really do like that that um, that subtlety of the actual page turning. Now we've afforded you the opportunity to and your students, I should say, to take notes. So a student, for instance, could notice that an instructor focused on a particular area in class and could take. Um, here we go and could leave themselves a note in the digital ebook. Um, so 
So leaving that little note for ourselves saying, Professor, focus on this in class, study for the exam. So that little yellow indicator is there, and as we're going through the ebook, affords me the opportunity to recognize I took a note there, and if I want to reassess it, I can click on it right there and access that note. We also have the ability, and, and instructors have the ability to add audio notes up to three minutes an instance. You can add audio notes throughout the text, um, but they are limited to three minutes apiece. And that voice note, again, would be your own voice for your students to be able to hear uh, whatever information that you wanted to share with them in that regard. You also have the ability to leave um, page links within the text, as well as actual links to external websites. So for instance, if there was a page and you wanted to send your students to an actual external URL, you would add that here as well as a label. And that identifier would be there. You as an instructor and a student would have the ability to draw on the text. I'm not going to show everybody my hand-eye coordination is nowhere near good enough, but you can get the idea that it allows you to basically draw. Um, you can also create highlights and the students could highlight particular areas of the text for their own ability to really kind of reinforce where they want to focus for study areas, for instance, if there was an exam or a quiz upcoming in the course. Now, again, click that there, and then I'm able to move forward. Now I'm at the end of chapter three, but one of the unique features with the way we've set things up in Navigate is under this resources section, you have access to all of the media. And again, it's, a, it's an area where we've compartmentalized the curriculum. So all of the knowledge checks for an individual, uh, for an individual chapter are all in one place, as well as the chapter quiz. Uh, but you'll also notice that it will allow you to access all of the video. And these are all linked. So if, for instance, I wanted to look at the video for vital signs with one click, it brings the student to that area where they're then able to click on that video, it had launched the video, and allow them to, sh to watch that video at that point in time on their individual uh, ebook. But also under resources, after you've gone through the pieces, uh, animations, and, and uh, assessments that are in place, we have the ability to utilize this My Stuff page. Now what's neat about this is that it's keeping track of all of the individual notes, highlights, and pen marks in this instance that we've made as, an, as a student. And those are again links. So with one click, the student's able to go back to this page. And in this instance, you can use um, the eraser to erase this really great drawing that I put on here. But again, that link is there in the My Stuff section of the resources page. But you'll also note that so are the highlights. So as I go through, I'm able to just kind of grab and review individual highlights that I made throughout the, throughout the course session. So again, really interesting functionality that is there for the students should they want to utilize the ebook. Um, again, it, is, it does come, uh, the Advantage Access LMS does come in, bundled with the textbook at this point in time. But if students want to utilize this ebook, it is here for them and we do encourage them to do so. Uh, it is a really powerful tool. If I go back into our course and scroll up, We've reviewed again the lessons pathway learning tools, the ebook. I've, I've discussed the responsive design as well as the uh, mobile ready pieces, uh, drag and drop functionality, as well as the ability to add resources like websites or YouTube videos to your course. One other piece that we would like to touch upon briefly is the gradebook and the dashboard analytics that are available within our gradebook. So, with one click, the instructor is able to see the grades associated with the students in their course. Now, uh, an important distinction to make here is that the grade book won't be populated with any items until one of the students has taken an assessment. So the quiz which we added earlier does not appear here because no students have taken that assessment. But one of the problems that we had or one of the um, areas with Navigate 1 that's 
students and instructors specifically had an issue with, with was the, within the gradebook itself. Now, we only have these four instructors here and only these two ebook quizzes. However, once you have additional pieces in uh, and there's more tools, uh, more assessments, excuse me, available in the gradebook and additional students, we have locked the panes now. You'll be given scroll bar indicators to allow you to move to the left and right and move up and down, and but still see your student's name as well as the name of the individual assessment. And that was something that wasn't available in Navigate 1. So I've got a group of really, really bright students here, not so much, but we have the ability with, uh, with the grade analysis tool within the gradebook to drill down a little deeper and see the actual uh, specifics of a specific assessment. So in this instance, the uh, chapter one ebook quiz for this particular student allows me to bring that up. I'm able to see the start and end date as well as the assessment duration. Now, after this, I'm able to then see the actual attempts. Now, in this instance, we see that this start date, uh, this assessment, excuse me, was started at 4.22 p.m. and nine seconds and finished at 34 seconds. So the student took a grand total of about 24 seconds to take this assessment. However, if I click on view report, it does afford me the opportunity to see how they did against that individual chapter for this individual quiz, which questions they got right and which questions they got wrong. We have included some Bloom's taxonomy as well as the, the complexity. There are nine questions and they are all categorized as easy questions in this particular assessment. Now, as an instructor, we also have the ability, if I go back into the gradebook, to access what we refer to as our ebook report. Now, the ebook report is an interesting tool. It affords you as an educator the ability to see how your students are doing and which of the assets they're utilizing and not utilizing. This is a demonstration course, so the data that's included in it has been populated by myself and some of my colleagues just really quickly this afternoon. Um, excuse me. So you'll see that. The most popular chapter at this point is chapter 10, which has a total of 18 views. Chapter two is 17. Chapter one uh, has only 15 views. Since there are so many additional chapters that have no views, the least popular chapter section is basically empty. But what that would do is show you where your students are not utilizing, uh, which pieces of the curriculum they're not utilizing on a regular basis. Then this also will report out to you by chapter what's the best performing chapter as well as the worst performing chapter. Again, showing you which of your uh, which assessments are being um, handled the best and they're really appreciating and understanding, as well as the ones that they're not able to really demonstrate comprehension of. Now, within the class engagement section of the course, we're able to see again the number of resources viewed as well as the hours spent for each chapter and as well as the annotations made. So we can see how these annotations were made. Now if I click on this, it'll also show me by student engagement how those students are behaving or performing in that class. So this is for an individual chapter. And if I go to, for instance, we'll use, we'll stick it at chapter one, and I'm looking for the highest score. So we know that of the available hours and numbers, and again, this is demo information, but you can see where that information would be valuable to you as an instructor to see how the hours are spent and the resources have been viewed as well as the annotations made by your students. And then subsequently, how they're scoring based on that information. So I have a student here who has viewed this page 11 times. Um, it's only one resource, but their grade is a 50. And the students who have not viewed the page as many times, their grades are a little more well, none of their grades are really all that spectacular. They're all pretty lackluster. But you can see where these dashboard analytics are available for you as an instructor. And uh, we continue to fine tune and refine these for instructors. So we appreciate any feedback that you might want to offer to us at this point in time. But as we return to the dashboard, it again brings us back to the chapter, chapter specific information, and can again, with one click, come back into the gradebook. So we can see how our course is performing as a whole. So again, I've stayed at around 35,000 feet this afternoon and wanted to just kind of walk you through the tool and some of the basic reports and functionality that are available to you. If uh, any of you are interested in follow-ups where you'd like to get a little more granular or specific questions that we're not able to answer at the end of the call today, we encourage you to reach out to us. 
But um, that being said, if anyone does have any specific questions, I believe that we can go ahead and open the floor up to those now. And we'll ask our operator to assist us with the question and answer session. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question, please press star then a number one on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star then a number one on your telephone keypad. We will pause for just a moment to compile the Q&A roster. And there are no questions at this time. As a wrap up, I just wanted to show instructors the two ordering options that we're offering. Uh, the first package has the textbook with the Navigate to Advantage Access. Uh, both for the price of the textbook alone, which currently is 107.95 list. Uh, the digital only version is just the on online only, which has the ebook. Uh, that is priced at 50% off the package price, and for this package, it's 53.95 list. I'd also like to leave everyone with our uh, contact information. If you'd like to request a review copy or the instructor resources, you can visit the catalog page for this bundle. You can also contact your account specialist directly uh, via email through the link here, uh, go.jblearning.com slash finderrep, or feel free to call us at 1-800-832-0034. Uh, we also have additional resources for physical therapy and physical therapist assistant courses on our website. Uh, our account specialist can help you with that as well. Uh, so I'll pause just to see if we have any more questions. If anyone would like to hit star one, our operator can take your questions in the queue. And again, I'll thank everyone for joining us. And we will supply everyone who has registered for the session with a link to view the recording from this session as well as the PowerPoint slides and we'll give you your account rep's information as well. Operator, do we have any other phone, any other questions or calls coming in? There are no audio questions at this time. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Again, please feel free to contact us, and I want to thank Rob for a great demonstration today. Um, he's been very kind to offer any additional one-on-one -on -one webinars or to answer any questions. Um, I'm available as well, so... I'd like to thank you. My name is Grace Richards, and thank Rob again for today's session, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, everyone.